Harry Potter Quidditch Champions, a brand new title from Unbroken Studios, is finally here. After the incredible success of 2023's Hogwarts Legacy, WB Games is looking to capitalize once again on the ever-popular Wizarding World of Harry Potter. The sport many fans were hoping to see as part of Hogwarts Legacy has now been released as a standalone title, built from the ground up on a completely different engine and with a strong focus on multiplayer. Although yes, there is a career mode where you can play solo. And yet so many people still seem to have the wrong idea about this game. Why wasn't it in Hogwarts Legacy? Is it a mobile game? What about microtransactions? And perhaps most importantly, is it any good? Well, people of the internet, allow me to set the record straight, even for those of you who may have playtested the game early. After all, there's a reason those playtests usually say something about work in progress. The truth is that Harry Potter Quidditch Champions is actually a fantastic representation of the iconic Wizarding World sport. It captures the wild, frantic nature of Quidditch, and while the rules differ from the books, it still has many of the things that make Quidditch so fun in the first place. And through it all, somehow they've managed to make each role important for your team's success. And yes, the game is incredibly fun. Even after about 15 hours across three live streams here on YouTube during the launch week, I'm still wanting to play more and feel I'm only starting to scratch the surface of the game's more advanced mechanics. I finished all of the career modes available, which include the Weasley Burrow Cup, the Hogwarts House Cup, the Triwizard Cup, and the Quidditch World Cup. I've played on all of the difficulties, reached level 42, and have played a handful of online games as well. All of my time with the game has been on the PS5 version through my PlayStation Plus membership, as it's one of the free games for the month of September. It's also available on PC and Xbox for $29.99, and that's for the base version. They also sell a $39.99 deluxe version, which includes a few extra digital cosmetics. And just for full disclosure here, I was also sent a code for the game by WB, but I had already installed it with my PlayStation Plus copy, so that's actually the one I've been playing on. Now, after the opening cutscene and creating your character for the first time, you're taken to the Quidditch pitch at the Weasley Burrow. This serves as the game's tutorial, and I highly recommend you don't rush through this section. Learning the controls of Quidditch Champions is one of the most important parts of mastering the game. There are also a handful of control customization options, so be sure and look through those as well. These controls and how you maneuver each player on the field make up the core gameplay mechanics of Quidditch Champions. If this isn't right, then the entire game would fall apart. I'm happy to report, however, that the pure mechanics of Quidditch we see here, they're the best we've ever seen in a video game. Yes, even better than the much-beloved Harry Potter Quidditch World Cup. There are six positions available here, which is one shy of the seven that we see in the books and movies. Here, there are still three chasers, one keeper, and one seeker. But in this version of Quidditch, we only have one beater. And honestly, I think it makes perfect sense when you see how quickly beaters can absolutely wreck these games. The chasers can tackle, pass, and shoot the quaffle through one of three hoops in an attempt to score 10 points for their team. Keepers are charged with protecting the three hoops and have a special set of controls to help them quickly dash toward the incoming quaffle. Keepers also have this special ability where they can send out a play calling ring, which is gonna give a speed boost to your team and actually debuff the opposing team. The lone beater can choose to target any opposing player, including the other team's beater. Surprisingly, beater has been my favorite position to play so far. Before launch, I feared the role of beater would feel the most disconnected of all the positions, with players in this role feeling as if they had little impact on winning or losing. I'm happy to say that couldn't be further from the truth here in the final game. Having a good beater on your team who knows which opposing players to target and win can make all the difference. Seeker is probably the most interesting position of them all, and also the most different from how it functions in the Potter books and films. For starters, the Snitch appears just a few times each match, and the Seeker position only opens up when the Snitch is on the field. It's also worth 30 points rather than 150, and catching it doesn't always end the game. Here, each game ends when one team scores 100 points. If neither reaches 100, then the highest scoring team after seven minutes is crowned the winner. Now, book purists, they may scoff at many of these changes. I personally believe, though, that significant alterations were required to make this an enjoyable gameplay experience. And while it's still early in the life of Quidditch Champions, I think it works quite well and feels balanced overall. These systems in place mostly help games from getting too out of hand. Now, admittedly, I have seen it happen a few times, but I've also seen some pretty amazing comebacks thanks to a timely goal or two followed by a quick catch of the snitch. And even though the snitch isn't as overpowered as it is in the books, it still almost always plays a major role in determining the outcome of each match. So while the old Quidditch World Cup game may be more technically book accurate, to me at least, Quidditch Champions far surpasses it in terms of the overall spirit of the game. What I mean by that is that each position feels and plays exactly as you'd expect it to from reading the books. Being a good chaser requires teamwork, effective passing, and well-timed shots. 
Beaters need to be aware of everything happening and target the right players at the right time. Keepers have to react quickly and help call the shots with the play caller ability. And then there's the seeker, which to me is the most challenging of all the positions. And given that it's worth 30 points, this is as it should be. Playing seeker requires lightning quick reflexes and a near constant focus if you want to have a shot at beating the other team's seeker to the snitch. And going back to the books, thinking of all the different ways that Harry describes playing seeker, I think they did a fantastic job of bringing that here into the video game. Again, better than any putter game I've seen before. Now playing solo versus online with a team can also be a very different experience. When you're playing alone, you can switch to any position at any time, save for the seeker, which you can only switch to when the snitch is on the field. This makes Quidditch Champions feel drastically different from the old Quidditch World Cup game because you have way more control over everything that's happening on the pitch. It's also really fun for developing strategies on when you should switch roles to have the biggest impact on the outcome of each match. Do you want to start as the beater and try to take out the opposing keeper or start with a chaser to immediately go for an early goal? And what about when the snitch comes out? Do you go after it yourself as a seeker or try to take out the opposing seeker with your beater? And having this ability to switch roles anytime you want really helps to drive home that wild and frantic nature of Quidditch. Now, when you team up with friends, each of you will be responsible for a chaser role plus one additional role. Currently, the game only supports 3v3 for online play, as each human player is actually responsible for two roles. Unbroken Studios has announced they're working on a 6v6 PvP mode where all players are controlled by humans. Now, given how the game is currently set up, with the Seeker only being active while the Snitch is on the field, it's clear they have some obstacles they'll have to overcome to make this mode work. And what about playing as a full-time keeper in an online match? How do they keep that player engaged when the action is away from them, sometimes even for an extended period? Personally, I really enjoy the current 3v3 setup. Because the role of Seeker is usually only needed twice per match, combined with the fact that you can switch roles at any time, I actually think the current system may give us the best of both worlds while maximizing player enjoyment. That being said, Unbroken Studios has surprised me once already, so if they believe they can get a fun and engaging PvP mode that's a true 6v6, I'll definitely give it a shot. My online matches so far have typically been pretty competitive and very intense. It's amazing how many players are already getting to be highly skilled at the game. Matchmaking has it's been pretty quick so far, but I have had some games where it was unable to find a match for me with a full team of three. And unfortunately, this could be a worrying sign for a game that absolutely needs a consistent player base to be successful. Then again, it is launch week for the game, and they could also be working through the kinks of online matchmaking, taking in all these new players. When it comes to the career mode, it consists of four cups which start with the tutorial at the Weasley Burrow. From there, you'll make your way through the Hogwarts Cup, the Triwizard Cup, and eventually the World Cup. There are five difficulties to choose from, and you'll need to play on the highest one available to you if you want to unlock the next cup. Once you reach the World Cup, there are 16 national teams to pick from, including the USA, Canada, the United Kingdom, and others. Notably absent, though, are Ireland and Bulgaria, two of the most notable teams from the Harry Potter series. Each of these cups can be played entirely solo or with two friends. Unfortunately, being online is always required for Quidditch champions, even if you want to play solo. Honestly, I'd love to see them add an offline career mode where fans could enjoy that core Quidditch gameplay here anytime, even many years after these servers eventually do shut down. I mean, if you think about it, right now we can always go back and play Quidditch World Cup anytime we want. And seeing how good the gameplay is here, I think it would be a real shame to lose Quidditch champions forever when those servers are eventually shut down one day. Hopefully that day, though, is a long way off, but this will largely be determined by how successful this game is with the online competitive audience. Now, all along the way, you'll unlock a ton of new items. The two most important items are talent skill points and moonstones, which you can use to upgrade your broom. Each position has 18 possible skill upgrades you can make, but the catch here is you can only spend a maximum of 10 points for each position. Now, I love that you can fit these upgrades to your playstyle, and trust me, these are going to have a huge impact on how that position plays for you. For example, there's an upgrade you can get for the beater that allows you to intercept the opposing team's bludger and use it against them. And upgrading that more and more means you can do this from even further and further away. Brooms can also be upgraded, and while some are faster, others may be more agile and have a higher defense. You can also set different broomsticks for different positions. So if you want your chaser to be on a Nimbus, but your seeker to be on a Firebolt, you can absolutely do that here. All of this comes together to make it so you can really optimize each position with the best gear and the best skills available that fit how you want to play. It's also worth noting that you can tweak these skill upgrades as many times as you want. 
If you tried an upgrade but decide you prefer another one instead, you can remove that and then immediately spend the point again on something else. I've already seen a few lively debates on which upgrades and brooms are best, and honestly, the fact that we don't already have a clear meta in terms of brooms and skill upgrades, I think it's a really good sign for the game moving forward. Now, it's still very early, but I think there's a level of depth here that makes me believe we definitely have esports potential here, especially if this actually starts to catch on with a wider audience. In addition to all of the upgrades that affect gameplay, there are also plenty of cosmetics to unlock featuring classic characters from the Harry Potter series, Hogwarts Legacy, and yes, even a throwback to PS1 Hagrid. Dude, we gotta get the Hagrid mask. Oh, and by the way, it's also true, there are no microtransactions to be found here. All currencies you see here are earned and unlocked directly in-game. It's really interesting to see this pricing strategy here for the launch. Clearly, it's a game that could have had microtransactions. In fact, maybe it was even in the plan at some point. But for now, it seems that WB is trying a different strategy here. With plenty of items and activities on the way as part of their 2024 roadmap, it's going to be interesting to see what content they decide to charge for and how much. Also, depending on how sales go for that content, it's reasonable to think that the game could eventually go fully free to play and add microtransactions for these cosmetics. But that, of course, all depends on how the sales go for everything else, because after all, they have to make money somehow in order to keep support for this game going over the long term. Currently, my biggest critique for the game is I just want more, because right now it's relatively light on content. Once you finish those career cups, there really isn't much else to do if you aren't interested in things like online play, ranking up your character, and unlocking all of the cosmetic rewards. This could partly explain the game's cheaper $30 price point. I'd also love to see more Quidditch stadiums, more national teams, heck, maybe even the professional teams from the Harry Potter series. And definitely more characters. I mean, come on, at some point we have to get Lord Voldemort playing Quidditch. Because if he can do PS1 Hagrid, we gotta see Voldemort riding a broom and taking a bludger to the face. Now, if you can't tell by this point, I've absolutely loved my time with Quidditch Champion so far. Far more than I expected to, quite honestly. But as I said earlier, the success of this game won't be determined in the short term. How it's supported and whether or not it catches on with a more mainstream audience in the days, weeks, and months ahead, that is what will ultimately determine the future of this game. Fortunately, there's a really strong core gameplay element here that I hope most fans will at least give it a try. Unfortunately for now though, the game still seems to be living in the shadow of Hogwarts Legacy, a game aimed at a much wider audience, which I think has resulted in some unfair criticism directed at Quidditch Champions. If this had been titled Hogwarts Legacy Quidditch Champions and released as a $30 DLC add-on, many would be calling it one of the best DLCs of all time. Because honestly, I think the gameplay is that good. At least from a pure gameplay perspective though, I have to say, I 100% think WB made the right call in having this game developed from the ground up with mechanics and an engine that are solely focused on making Quidditch work as a video game. I mean, really make it work. Not like the old Quidditch mini games that we got in the Harry Potter movie tie-in games, because that's all they were, guys. They were mini games. Trust me, I know, we've been playing through all of them right here on this channel. And that's exactly what Quidditch would have been in Hogwarts Legacy if it was included there. Quidditch Champions is a game made by different people with different goals, but it's clear many of the devs here at Unbroken Studios are just as passionate about the Wizarding World as the folks at Avalanche. There are so many fun nods to the original seven book series, the Harry Potter films, and even Hogwarts Legacy with more to come. I mean, come on, they gave us a nod to PS1 Hagrid, one of the most iconic memes of all time. And even though the game is currently light on content, especially if you aren't interested in online play, I think it's still easily worth the $30 price point and an absolute no-brainer to try if you're a PlayStation Plus member. The core gameplay is definitely there, and with enough support from WB and Unbroken Studios, this should hopefully be a Harry Potter title that fans can enjoy for years to come. Now, if you want to see even more gameplay of Quidditch Champions, I've uploaded Episode 1 from our playthrough. It's over on our Let's Play channel, and I'll link it on the left side of your screen now. As always, thank you all so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.